Before reviewing the many enhancements made to the drawings environment in SOLIDWORKS 2014, there's one drawings related enhancement that's been made to both parts and assemblies. To facilitate product manufacturing information, otherwise known as PMI data, or paperless, SOLIDWORKS has added a new type of annotation plane in both parts and assemblies. The notes area is an annotation plane that supports the placement of things such as the title block table. But the best part is, it's static and doesn't rotate with the model. This annotation plane also now supports all table types, not just the general table or bill of materials, as was the case in previous releases. Back in the drawing, SOLIDWORKS' view palette has always been a place to easily find and place standard and custom views in the model. Now, in SOLIDWORKS 2014, SOLIDWORKS retains any placed views and instead shows which views are already on a drawing with a simple icon, making it easy to pick out any missing views. But more importantly, it allows you to go back at any time and add additional instances of a view that's already been placed. Though in this case, there's no need for two bottom views. A decent amount of work has gone into this drawing. However, all the work was supposed to, in fact, be done on the assembly in which this part exists. Replacing the models of view references is now an easy button pick. Simply choose the model to reference. This can even be a different document type completely, such as the parent assembly. Then specify which view should be replaced, or simply choose the All Views option if that's desired. Every view selected will then be updated with a new model and if the previous model was derived from the same part or in the case of an assembly contains the part anything that already has been created on the drawing will be preserved. This is great for those cases where you started a drawing with the wrong file or want to create a new drawing based on a similar file. With a new model we're required to make some adjustments to the section view on the bottom view to show some of the hardware in the assembly. Editing section lines created using the powerful Section View Assist tool introduced in SOLIDWORKS 2013 now fully supports all the tools used to create it, keeping you in a familiar, easy to use tool without ever having to edit the underlying sketch. Now that the section has been updated through this stack of hardware, it would make sense to add some stacked balloons. If you've ever created stacked balloons and accidentally selected the wrong components or selected them in the wrong order, you're sure to love the new ability to reattach stacked balloons to new components. With a simple right mouse button command, you can specify a new part and the stacked balloons update to the new item number or any other property included in the balloon. This means you no longer have to delete stacked balloons and replace them to get them in the right order. While everything in the section view looks correct, as it should be, there's an enhancement here to point out that's new in SOLIDWORKS 2014. This laptop cover part is in fact a surface model, not a solid body. Previously a limitation, SOLIDWORKS section views now fully support creating section views of surface bodies, eliminating any workarounds required in the past. When adding dimensions, sometimes the virtual intersection of geometry is oftentimes the ideal location to dimension from. Doing this in the past required first creating a virtual sharp point, and then adding the dimension after it had been placed. Now, however, you can find the intersection of two entities on the fly while creating the dimension, eliminating this extra workflow to get the dimension you want. SOLIDWORKS is still creating the virtual sharp behind the scenes, it's just doing it in a much more streamlined workflow. We can do this for both ends of the dimension too, and then easily place it with a dimension placement tool. Users of traditional 2D drafting tools love control, and SOLIDWORKS 2014 provides more control for dimensions with the ability to explicitly control the leader and the extension line separately, allowing for both to have unique line styles as well as color and weight. There's even more control when it comes to dimensions where the dimension is above the leader, such as an ISO standard dimension. When you enable dual dimensions, you now have the ability to split the dual dimension so that the primary units are above the leader and the secondary are below. You can also control text that you would like to be above the leader line and a new separate field for text below the leader line. Other enhancements to annotations can be seen when working with notes. 
This note has some unique characteristics in that it's linked to the view in which it resides. When moving annotations from one view to another, in the past you would have to cut and paste the note, oftentimes leading to the annotation moving on the drawing. Now with the new attachment option, you can simply specify a new view, or even the sheet if that would be desired, and the note is changed with zero adjustment to its placement. Also, this note has been created in all lowercase text. Reading the text, however, it should be in all uppercase, as is the desired standard for most organizations. Instead of recreating the note, however, SOLIDWORKS has drastically simplified this problem with the all uppercase checkbox, which when checked changes the case of all the text. However, you can specify an exclusion list to avoid automatically setting this in the case of things such as unit callouts, such as MM or IN. A detail view will provide us with an opportunity to look at the next set of enhancements in closer detail. When detail views are created, the note for the view is provided automatically. These notes come with intelligence built into them. However, in the past, if you deleted this text, the intelligence would be lost. In fact, if you deleted all the text, how would you get it back? Now with view tags, this information can be propagated automatically using special tags which reference the drafting standard in use. For instance, if you look at the section view portion of the document settings, you can see where all this information is derived from. Tags allow you to point to these specific fields ensuring your drawing always adheres to company standards. With slots being a new feature in the whole wizard, it's important they're fully supported everywhere in the software. SOLIDWORKS 2014 carries on support for slots and drawings, first with center mark support. Just like holes, they can be created and populate patterns automatically. Likewise, we could have enabled the option to automatically place these in the drawing as well. Also for slots is support for hole callouts. Using the same tool and technology behind hole callouts, it keeps things consistent, looking at the underlying geometry to gather its information. Of course, we need to further dimension these slots, including their location, and the angle is one of them. Now, when placing angular dimensions, it's easier than ever to make everything line up just right with new soft snaps for angular dimensions. There's no more guesswork hoping you got it just right. But dimensioning every angle this way would overcrowd the view. Using the new Angular Running Dimension tool, we can dimension the angle of all of these features much more efficiently, and it's much clearer to understand. Just like ordinate dimensions, you place the first dimension and then subsequent locations are defined. Also, like ordinate dimensions, you can always go back and add further callouts to the same series. There's also a variety of choices to display the angular running dimensions, such as chain, bidirectional, and control over the extension lines. This ensures that they look just the way you want them to. Datum features have also been improved in SOLIDWORKS 2014. To make them easier to place, they now support placement on points, instead of just edges or existing dimensions, meaning there's no fuss to get them where you need them. And while not a proper geometric dimension, let's add a simple note to reference that data. Well, in the Note tool, or any tool that utilizes symbols, you'll notice a completely refreshed symbol library that's much easier to navigate. Sorted by logical areas, symbols are easier to find. And the new library even supports your favorites as well, making them easy to return to. You might also notice that now selecting on annotations now highlights any geometry they're attached to, making it easier to understand where a note or dimension has been attached. Let's add another sheet to place a bill of materials. You might notice when doing so, we're not presented with a dialog box asking us to specify a sheet format for this new sheet. That's because you can now predefine a sheet format to use for any subsequent sheets added after the first. Though you can also add them the old way as well if you prefer that control. Now, when we add the bill of materials for this assembly, you might notice that everything is already in numerical order on the table. That's because SOLIDWORKS 2014 now allows you to save any sorting methodology you choose in the bill of material template, saving the extra step needed when first placing a bomb table.
There's also now support for unique toolbox properties in the Bill of Materials as well. These include things such as the standard or the specification of the hardware allowing you to extract specific information from your hardware for downstream applications. This Bill of Material looks and fits well on this drawing sheet. But what if it were to get larger and extend off the sheet? In the past, we could, after the Bill of Materials has updated, manually split the table anywhere we chose. Now, however, in SOLIDWORKS 2014, you can specify a row count in which to split the Bill of Materials. Even better, you can specify that SOLIDWORKS always preserves this, even as the design changes and control how the split table will be placed. When we add several new components to the assembly, referenced in the drawing, in the past we would have to have made these changes reactively. However, in SOLIDWORKS 2014, when we return to the drawing, we can see that by previously setting the row count to split at, we've proactively avoided unnecessary cleanup and the drawing looks great as well.